Now it's time for my guest. He's gone from the IT crowd to becoming one of Hollywood's most loved stars. Hello, IT. Have you tried turning it off? You know what? I'm sick of saying that. According to the school bullies, the Bonner Brothers, Martin was just a simpleton who kissed dead birds. <gasps> Protection's a service I provide. It's gonna cost you, though. Cost me what, roughly? Feel your sister's boobs. Seems fair. <laughs> you need to play hard, fucking look at yourself. You're trying to drive yourself into the ground. You're absolutely right. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm spinning out. I'm gonna borrow this. No, no! Come out! Please welcome Chris O'Dowd! You've got a lovely, friendly face. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so... there's so much of it. Yeah. yeah. But it's all scrunched up into, hello! <laughs> That's a very right. cheery, lovely face. Hey, I appreciate that. And that is the creepiest start to any of you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Chris, it's the, uh, it's the festive season. Where will you be celebrating? I'm going to Guernsey. For any particular reason? Thank or... you, thank you. <laughs> Uh, Guernsey is a lovely island. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> is this the advert for Guernsey? <laughs> population, 33,000. Uh, my wife grew up in Guernsey, so right. we're going to stay with her parents for Christmas, and my parents are coming. Oh, really? Yeah, so that's going to be great. <laughs> well, the battle of the parents, decide which parents are better, and then just burn the others. <laughs> <laughs> And do they get on? Presumably, be they've the actually only met once. They only met at our wedding. I know, because um, I don't think they um, liked each other. So, <laughs> I know. I think they. I think they do get on. Yeah. Um, I guess we're going to see. We're going to be in a room. Yeah. For three days. <laughs> um, is the reason you're going to go into because you're afraid of your sisters? <laughs> because I don't know if you've heard about some of the stories, but they're extraordinary what they did to you. Oh, hold on. Hold I, on. I read a, a story about tickling. <laughs> Everybody's family did this. I don't know if they did. <laughs> My sisters are great, lovely girls. Hey, I'm not saying they're not. When we were younger, one of them, I had three of them, one of them, I can't remember their names, one of them, <laughs> one of them would tickle me until I was laughing and the other one was holding me down and as I was laughing, the other one would spit in my mouth. <laughs> Which is a, a great prank. It's top notch. If you're doing it, if yeah. you're receiving it. I can see it as funny now. At the time, it didn't feel hilarious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, what are your. Um, what do you think is the best thing for Christmas for you? The best thing about it? Yeah. What do you like the most? Are you a Christmassy guy? Kinda. I mean, I like it a lot more now that I have kids. Yeah, that must be. Um, How old are your kids? I had never thought to ask. They look. <laughs> I would say, like, 18 months and four in January. Yeah, OK. Yeah, yeah, they're very nice. <laughs> so, presumably, that age, they're, like, wild for Christmas. Well, one of the... Like, the baby really doesn't know. Uh, but the toddler is very excited. And it's the first time he's heard about Santa Claus, really, right. or that. And so he's... He's getting quite pedantic in his questioning of the minutia of oh, it really? all. Where he kind of... This morning, he said, Daddy, can you fit down the chimney? And I'm like... I, I haven't tried, but I wouldn't have thought so. And he said, so how does Santa Claus fit down the chimney? And I thought for a second, and I, I thought, yes. Art, you know the way you see one of those sailboats in a bottle? Yeah. And he said, no. <laughs> <laughs> Which was fair, because he's three. Uh, <laughs> and I said, well, you will. And then I just walked out the door. So, you strike me as someone that uh, is good at buying presents. You look like you've got a gift. Um, I'm, I'm not great. Really? No, I'm not great. I mean, I like giving them. I just don't... I never know what to get. This year, we have a rule for myself and my missus where um, we're getting two things. One, something to read, and two, something that can fit in a matchbox. 
And she, I can't wait to see her face when she opens it to discover I got her matches. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to think you could get, you could get like a little sort of USB stick yes. with the book that, uh, uh, that means the most to both of you on a USB stick. Yes. And it could be read by the children on, on an audio book. So Our children? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. They're great readers. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I just think it'd be really sweet That's and really, really nice. creepy. Yeah, yeah. And you'd have that forever. Now that you've brought in the t kind of technology oh, vibe... It could be a slideshow of all the things that's wonderful about your wife to you on this oh, USB like a really stick. short slice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we usually do a thing where we get gifts... Oh, my God, this is awful. But we get gifts from the pets. Like, from, from yeah. our, from our that's dog. A, that's a cool thing to do, cos then it puts less pressure on you, cos you say, oh, yes. look what the dog's got you, and then it's something amazing. Yeah, and also the car and cards, cards from the pets. And our aunt, like, we have a dog and a cat, and the dog is just the most loving animal in the world, and the cat's a dick. <laughs> so, it's like a Siamese dick. <laughs> uh, so, we, have, like, we write the cards in character. So we'd oh, be nice. like, nice. oh, from the dog, it'd be like, oh, thanks, mummy. I love going for walks with you and jumping up on the bed in the morning. You're the best. And then the one from the cat will just open and go, cunt. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, that's great, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Let's talk about um, Get Shorty, which has just come out. Is it its uh, third series, is that right? We're, our second series has just come out, yeah. and we're about to start shooting our third. OK. Yeah. And you play... Um, a tough guy. A I do. I play a guy called Miles Daly who's... Um, he starts off really as a kind of a debt collector for uh, a Latino mob in Parump, Nevada, which is this shitty little town outside Vegas. And uh, he stumbles upon a script in L.A. when he's picking up some money yeah. and decides to try and make it as a film producer. And do you play it... Like, be your f there's fight scenes, you're kind mm -hmm. of hard. Like, you seem like a lovely fella, but sure. you don't look like a fighter. Was that difficult? Um... Do you know what I mean? You just seem like, hey, you look like you could stop fights yes. rather than start them. I'm more a hugger than a fighter, but, you know, when, the, when, when needs must. Yeah, because we've actually got a photo of you like, uh, from fight training. Let's have a look at this. Look at that. Oh. Yeah, look at that. What oh happened there? Oh, my goodness. That was actually if, during a scene. We were doing a scene in a prison, and I get in a big scrap, and... <laughs> You kind of feel somewhat hardy when you pick up an injury in a yeah. fight scene in a prison. Yeah. But the guy I was fighting with was an uh, ex-kickboxer or something, and I, and I was kind of talking to him afterwards, and what had happened was I, he, he punches me in the stomach in this scene, yeah. and you kind of double over to show it, and I just bang off the top of his head. Aish. And I thought it was... Are we did with stitches? Kind of, yeah, to get eight stitches in there. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, they're all right. It's quite nice having a war wound, though, isn't it? Yeah. So you kind of come home and like... What I said it to the guy afterwards, he's like, oh, I didn't feel it. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Now, the other thing, as well as being an amazing actor, um, there's, I was reading about the stuff that you do with charity. There's a, you work with um, a specific charity called Choose Love. Yeah. Which is great. I don't yeah. know if anyone knows about it, if you want to explain it. Yeah, well, Choose Love is a... Well, it's really, I suppose, the slogan for Help Refugees UK. Yeah. So they fund an awful lot of stuff, um, really to get to the, the people in the camps who are getting off the boats in Greece, and then a lot of homelessness here in England who have refugees who have come over. Yeah. And they have a, a shop on Carnaby Street... Um, where you can go in and actually buy, um, like, specific things. Like, so you can buy a sleeping bag yeah. and they'll get it to the person over there or sanitary products for the... And the, all of the kind of stuff that people really, really need. And can you do that online as well? You can do it at, uh, yeah, at choose.love. OK. Yeah, for everybody. It's, it's a fantastic charity. They kind of provided 800,000 meals for people last year. It's, it's really terrific, yeah. And there's a, another podcast you do uh, with Crisis? That's right. For a homeless charity called Crisis, we teamed up to do a, a scripted podcast, kind of three-parter, um, about a guy who finds himself uh, without a home on Christmas Eve. He's a father, and he's got his son for the night. Yeah. And suddenly, some place that he thought he was going to be able to stay out falls through. Yeah. And so it's about his struggle to not let his kid know what's happening while he's trying to sort it all out. Right. Um, and it does make you think at this time of year, when we're all spending this amazing time with our family, that it's 
you know, there'll be 25,000 people on the streets um, or certainly sleeping rough on Christmas Eve this year. So, mm. so go to crisis. Yeah, it's a good thing to... <laughs> and, um... You seem like a good boy. You seem like you're able to bring joy. It was a lovely... We've got a photo of you the other day at Dublin Airport. I don't know if anyone's seen this. Oh. This is you, you, uh, you just joined in with some singing. Yes, I got coerced. We were trying to harangue some kids through the airports and they were singing carols, so it was kind of sweet. Have you got, like, a favourite Christmas song? Um, I like the David Bowie and Bing Crosby one. Yep. And I love the Pogues. But no-one knows the words, do they? I know the bloody words. Do you? <laughs> do I? Let me think. I think I probably do. OK. What's the beginning? Here we go. It was Christmas Eve, babe. In the drunk tank, an old man said, son, well, I'll not see another one. And then he sang a song about the rare old Mountain Dew. And I turned my face away and I dreamt about you. Oh. <laughs> that was phenomenal. I can think of no finer way of ending a lovely Christmas interview than that. Ladies and gentlemen, the wonderful Chris O'Dell!